Um, I'm pleased to be here today, and I'm joined by a number of council members, and I'm going to introduce them, starting with our key sponsor, which is Mark Eldridge, uh, Nancy Navarro, and Tom Hucker, and other council members, Nancy uh, Florine, Roger Berliner, and we also are joined by Clint Snub, who's the head of the housing and uh, uh, housing division for Montgomery County. Uh, nearly one third of the county residents are tenants, and yet for a long time, they effectively had little or no voice, and they were not at the table. Uh, I decided to change that uh, some years ago. For example, I meet with the realtors and other business people, and I said at that point in time. Uh, we need to, in fact, uh, include and to have a tenant working group, a working, working group that can look at some of the challenges and difficulties that the tenants face, uh, and they provided me with a series of recommendations, and we've implemented some of those recommendations. Uh, some of them are incorporated in this bill today. I also put together a county resource established the Reynolds, county resources established the Reynolds Alliance, and its leader, Mac Losak, is here, and I thank you, Mac, for all the work that you've done in that regard as well. Uh, they've done a great job, and it has many other advocates who are concerned about the plight of tenants in Montgomery County. Uh, this bill makes several changes to the landlord-tenant law, principally aimed at enhancing the existing rights of tenants and improving the quality of rental housing through increased inspection. This bill will help bring more transparency to the leasing process, give tenants some additional information and rights, and increase inspections of rental units. Recent events have demonstrated the importance of more frequent and thorough inspections. Uh, too many tenants, unfortunately, were fearful to come forward to explain uh, their concerns and their plight, uh, believing that they may, in fact, be retaliated against. Uh, they deserve better, and this bill offers some help and fairness. It strikes a good balance. Now I would like to introduce the person who has been a principal sponsor of all the legislation we had related to tenants, who helped in the formulation of the uh, implementation group, uh, who also have helped in the funding uh, for the projects that we've had going forth. Uh, he's the principal sponsor and the person who I think deserves a great deal of credit as to why we're here today, Mark Elvis. Mark? Well, first of all, I want to th I want to thank a, first, a few people. I want to thank the county executive, uh, first of all, for creating the task force and for working with me on this. Uh, when I first came on the council, there had been a, an affordable housing task force, and we noticed there were like no tenants on the affordable housing task force, and so we asked the executive if we could create another task force to focus on the tenant issues. You are a third of the people in the county. And we felt it was important to look at it from a tenant perspective, not just from the global affordable housing perspective. And I was really gratified that the county executive agreed that he supported the effort and the work of that tenant task force, which, we, which produced this tenant work group report in 2010. And we have gone from this report to things that were implemented administratively, but also to things that required legislation to implement. I want to thank my co-sponsors, Nancy Navarro and Tom, Tom Hucker. It's, um, it was amazingly important to have your support. Um, things go easier when there's support for something in the beginning of the process, and I really appreciate your support for this, and I think we've all come up with something that um, is going to make, every, make the life of tenants in this county better. I want to thank Matt Losak, who chaired the task force, but also for his indefatigable work through Renner's Alliance for the tenants in this county. Uh, you've done a lot of work, and uh, we really appreciate it. Uh, former state senator and now U.S. Congressman Jamie Raskin uh, worked with us from the beginning, and I really want to th thank him for that. Uh, board member Jill Ortman Faust, um, I think, was really special because you, you came out and talked about tenant legislation from the perspective of somebody in the education system. And it is absolutely important to understand this isn't just about the right of a tenant to occupy a space, but it's what it does to families to have safe and secure housing and how that makes a difference in their lives and how that makes a difference in the lives of their children and how that has an educational impact. And I was really appreciative when you came and testified and kind of wove the full picture together because too often we just talk about a part of it. I wanted to thank Clarence Stokes for working with us diligently, tirelessly, not always fun, 
but, <laughs> but we got to a place we needed to be. And I, you know, and perseverance has a lot of value. And I appreciate your persevering with, with me on this. I w wanted to thank Chuck Short. And I don't see Chuck. I not see Chuck here. Uh, Chuck was an amazing contact and a resource with the administration, and his advice and his uh, um, support was really important. I wanted to thank Cost. Understood the importance of this and was willing to support it. And the last people I want to thank are the tenants in the county who made themselves visible and I think really helped make this possible. It's your stories um, that have been growing. And uh, for a long time, that has been a silent voice. And I think through this legislation, we're hoping to change that. Um, tenants often have uh, difficulties raising issues. They live in the fear of retaliation. And it's hard for a lot of us to understand retaliation because we've never experienced it. But if you're a recent immigrant, if your status is uncertain, it makes it very hard to say, I want the government to come help me, particularly if you come from a country where you don't go to the government for help. <laughs> it's not, you know, most of the world is not Montgomery County. And I'm really proud of the fact that I live in a place where you can say Montgomery County is the place that will help you not the place you need to be afraid of. But I think a lot of tenants continue to have that fear. And there are anomalies in the state law, which we are not able to address here, that give landlords a somewhat uneven hand in dealing with tenants. And hopefully we can persuade our state legislators to take steps to deal with what they can do at the state level. This bill accomplishes some major improvements. It moves, um, lets us sample every rental property over the next two years in inspections. So we're going to broaden the inspection regime. We're going to target. We're going to look at the older buildings, the buildings that have the most problems, and we're going to start there and work our way forward. Um, tenants aren't always not going to have to rely on their willingness to complain because the more inspections you get, the less it becomes you versus the landlord. It becomes the county doing its job and saying, we found the problem and asking the landlord to fix it, which is a much better relationship to have. And. Uh, Tenants will not have to choose between safe and decent housing and a roof over their head. Nobody should be in the position of saying, if I ask for something, am I jeopardizing my ability to stay here? Um, tenants are going to get 90 days notice of rent increases. That is really important because in this rental market, particularly if you're at the low end of the rental market, housing mm -hmm. at the low end is scarce. And it's not like you can say, I'm leaving tomorrow, I'll just find another apartment. And so the extra 90 days, the not full 90 days, give people time to find the housing they need. And leases are going to have summary language that says what are the legal requirements of a lease because a lot of leases are hard to read. I have a hard time reading leases. It's not the small print. It's the length of legal language that, some, that sometimes, and people have found evidence, this contradicts what's in, contradicts what's in the main part of the lease. So we're going to get plain language that, that focuses on the main points of a lease. And I think that's really important. We're going to do data collection. You, you can't talk about an affordable housing crisis and understand that if you don't collect the data to see what's happening to housing. And so I think the data collection is going to improve our resources and help us make better decisions going forward. Um, tenants are going to be able to have meeting spaces available to them in their buildings. No more of, as it was experienced, one building in Silver Spring where the landlord calls the police and says the tenants can't assemble here. That's not going to happen. Um, and we're going to provide more, mil more information on utilities so tenants can understand when their bills are being switched from all-inclusive well, all to now you're paying the utility bill, they'll have a better understanding of what exactly they're paying. This is a big step forward. I didn't get everything I wanted, but I got the major things I wanted. And I think we're going to continue to work, see what we can learn, uh, see what comes out of this. I mean, hopefully as experiences change and we continue to do research, we'll see what else needs to be done. But it's a, it's a big step for us, um, and it's a, big, it's a big step for the county to take this. We've kind of stayed away from these issues for a long time. So I'm really proud to be here, proud that we'll be signing the bill, and proud I worked with an executive Thank like you. Mr. Lincoln. Thank, Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs> we'll now hear from the council president and then from the two sponsors and anybody else who wants to speak after that. Mr. President? Thank you, county executive. I do think it's important to sing the praises of the committee as well as all the colleagues because this is an example of where we were able to find common ground on an issue that was contentious. When you get a 9 nothing vote on an issue of this magnitude, it says you've done your business well. 
And so I really commend all my colleagues, including the lead sponsor, for his willingness to work with us to come up with a bottom line that works. From my perspective, the inspection piece is so important. If we learned anything about the tragedy that took place in our county, it is, oh my goodness, we are not attending to the buildings that have had the most complaints year after year. And now we will. Now we will focus on that. So I am grateful to be here in this moment. I'm grateful for the county executive's leadership. As the county executive said, many people are fearful of raising their hand and saying, I've got a problem. So in the District of Columbia, they have an office of tenant advocacy. That's a concept that I continue to believe we want to take a look at and see whether it's right for us because we want to make it possible for anybody, for anybody who's feeling that they are not being treated fairly to raise their hand and to go to some place where they know it is safe from day one and know that they will be cared for in Montgomery County because that is what we do. Thank you. Good afternoon, Nancy Navarro, Council Member District 4. And uh, in, uh, in Spanish, we have a saying that says, más vale tarde que nunca, better late than never. <laughs> These are uh, issues that I know Council Member Elrich uh, and many of my colleagues and so many in the community, uh, Executive Leggett, have been working on. Uh, and you know, I was myself a renter when I first moved to Montgomery County, not too far from here in an apartment, um, and can very much relate to what it means to make sure that you strive to find affordable and uh, quality housing for your family. Uh, and so this is a great day. This is an amazing step forward. And it has, it has been mentioned before, extraordinary work by all council members with the community, with Mr. Lozak, and who re he represents, to find some commonalities and some consensus. Um, I'm really proud to have served uh, on this council during this time where we are taking on so many imperative uh, pieces of legislation that I know will help so many in our county. And as it was mentioned earlier, you know, mobility in our schools is, is a big deal and it has a cost. Uh, and we should not uh, be in a situation where so many uh, in this extraordinarily wealthy county have to resort to that type of uh, constant uh, mobility uh, in order to find stable housing. So this is a great day, a great step forward. Thank to everybody who worked so hard and um, hopefully minimum wage will follow. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks, Ike. Uh, thanks, Mark and Nancy, for your leadership on this. This is a great day, um, and we should do this more often. Um, um, I'm very excited about this bill. Um, it's been a long time coming, as others have said. Uh, we have put up with too many of these violations and too many properties for too long, and I think today is the beginning of a new day. It's not the end, but it's the beginning of a new day where we're going to have much more vigorous um, prosecution of our, uh, maybe that's the wrong word, but uh, in, uh, focus on the worst violations and the worst properties. Mark mentioned the amendments um, I was able to uh, um, sponsor for the bill I'm, that I'm very proud of. The, I'm very happy about the two-year lease requirement, the plate English requirement, many other very basic common sense protections in the bill. Um, but the inspection regime that we were able to add as amendments, um, I'm very happy about. I think it means for the first time we're going to focus on the worst first. We're going to wor focus on the worst properties and the worst violations. For the first time, health and safety violations like rats and mice and roaches and bed bugs and mold and mildew are in statute for the first time. And we're telling our, our Director of Housing Community um, uh, admin, uh, Affairs. Affairs, thank you, um, <laughs> to focus on those first. We're never going to have unlimited resources in DHCA. The county's not going to have unlimited resources. We have to make sure we're focusing on the worst violations and the worst properties. And that's not only good for tenants, I believe that's good for landlords. No longer will we have landlords telling us we're getting the whole industry painted with a broad brush uh, because of the neglect of a few landlords and a few properties. Mm -hmm. um, that's how we tackle other problems. That's exactly should be our approach to housing. Um, the data and transparency piece is very important as well because this means for the first time all of us as taxpayers and certainly the county council and DHCA are going to know which violations were, um, were found in inspections, which citations were assessed, and which fines were paid by landlords. And we're going to see that much more uh, frequently than we ever have in the past, which is terrific. So tenants will be able to know what a building's like before they consider moving in. 
And that's going to let the market help determine, um, you know, uh, uh, help enforce good behavior, reward good behavior, and and keep our inspections focused on the, the worst ones because the county can't do everything. And finally, we're going to be able to enhance our oversight of negligent property owners because we're going to require them to report back the violations that they hear from tenants in real time. Too often we talk to tenants who say, I reported this and I reported that to my building manager, talk to the president of the apartment community, and they say, I didn't know anything about that because something got lost in translation. We're going to be finding out these, these complaints in real time and be able to, um, to make sure the county is responding, and that's going to be good for everyone as well. So again, um, Just, uh, I'm Nancy Florine. Um, I was president uh, while we were doing this and chairing the committee that oversee saw it, and I, I do <laughs> want to thank everybody uh, for their engagement. And it's not just the people in this room. The real estate community was very involved. They pointed out the challenges, some of the challenges that we worked through. Uh, and, but really, the credit goes to Mark uh, for taking this on and sticking with it and taking the, allowing us to take our time to make it something that everyone could uh, buy into. And I think it created a better product. So thank you, Mark, and thanks to all my colleagues. Betty, um, you know, the, the, the work session after work session, they were so substantive and um, I think we really just covered a very wide range of issues. I'm very proud to have served on this uh, council uh, at the time we were passing this legislation and I uh, was ple pleased to support the legislation. Um, I also wanted to express, I, I really learned something, I learned a lot of things in this process, but I learned a lot about the importance of the, 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 the social capital of the community, the, the strength of community organizing in the community because government can't solve every problem we do need residents to feel empowered to engage with the county uh, and to engage with their property owners to speak up for their rights and to request uh, the same quality services that everybody in this community would want to have for themselves. So uh, the role of organizations in providing for that is really important and uh, I think that was one of the real benefits of this whole legislative process was learning about that. But again, thank you to uh, Mark and everybody for uh, working on this. I really enjoyed it and I'm, again, I'm very proud to have been on the council as we passed it. Uh, this is an important and exciting day, uh, the signing of this bill, and I'm excited about uh, moving forward and implementing the bill. I'm most excited about uh, what the bill speaks to, and you've heard from a couple of the council members uh, part of that, and I think one of the most important things that we can do is use this as a way to grow and strengthen the voice mm -hmm. of tenants in Montgomery County and playing a part with the county in addressing the quality of housing uh, in Montgomery County. We need that voice. It can't go absent. It can't be done through substitute. We need, the, we need your participation to get the benefit of this bill. I'd also like to thank the county executive for his ongoing support of quality affordable housing in Montgomery County. I want to thank the sponsors uh, of the bill, in particular uh, Council Member Elridge, uh, for hanging in there with us and as we work through this and his staff, Dale uh, and uh, Debbie, uh, because we, we got down in the trenches and worked through a lot of things. I want to thank the, the Fed Committee for all of its work. Uh, we worked on this for quite a while, almost two years, uh, and they worked to really, uh, line by line, we worked through each one of these issues to try to find uh, a, a solution uh, that we could go forward with, and I really appreciate their efforts uh, in, in sticking and sticking with it. So I'm excited about this, looking forward as we go, uh, go forward in implement, uh, implementing uh, Bill 1915. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Leggett. Uh, Matt Losak, the Montgomery County Renters Alliance. We were formed in 2010 as a recommendation of the Tenants Work Group. We're the first and only nonprofit in the region exclusively dedicated to renter outreach, education, organizing, and uh, uh, advocacy. This bill is extremely important. We are very pleased. We're very thankful, especially to the council as a whole, uh, but also to Mr. Leggett for his leadership in recognizing the importance of this movement well before it became popular, and to Mark Elrich, who recognized it well before Mr. Leggett recognized it before he was <laughs> even on the council, uh, when it was extremely unpopular and when he uh, took it on and ran with it by himself. There are thousands and thousands of renters throughout Montgomery County who are hurting. They are afraid for their homes. They're afraid to speak up. They're afraid to pursue promised or required maintenance. They want to organize tenants associations and they're not sure how to go about it. 
They're not sure how to leverage the resources that exist now, that are strengthened now because of this council uh, and because of Mr. Leggett. Uh, and so we have a lot of work to do. Uh, I look forward to pursuing that with the Department of Housing and Community Affairs. Uh, I am very grateful for this county for leading the way uh, on uh, and changing direction in protecting renters. Uh, and I think we have a lot more work to do, but I'm very grateful today. Thank you very much. Uh, many throughout our community, especially, but most importantly, uh, Mark Eldridge and uh, the sponsors, co-sponsors, and all the entire uh, council for the work that they've accomplished here. Uh, this is uh, legislation that is long overdue, and I believe will have a very positive impact going forward. And so I'm delighted today to sign the bill. Thank you, sir. Former president. <laughs> Horn. These are government pens, so they, they're taking a while. <laughs> <laughs> We're through. All right. <laughs>